and welcome to another episode of I Could Never Be Here on Popcorn Talk Network. Raise your hand if you are still feeling exhausted from this past weekend because of daylight saving time. Yeah, that's right. My hand is up right here. Man, that uh, hour of sleep. It's amazing what little an hour can do to kind of mess you up. But you know what? It's good. And you know, it was a rainy weekend here in Los Angeles. But I realize rain brings growth. And with so much in LA, there's so much sun. But the issue is when you, when you don't have rain, when you don't have that kind of going on, there's no growth. You don't have growth in the environment, growth in the trees and flowers. And I also realize that can definitely pertain to life. When you don't have those rainy moments, those challenges in your life, you don't grow. You're stagnant. So anytime that you face maybe an obstacle, realize that it's okay, that you're going to get through it, and you're going to grow because of it. And if you have that attitude, it's going to make facing those obstacles all the better. Our guest today, I am so excited to talk with. She's facing some weather issues of her own in New Hampshire. She's joining us via Skype. She's actually getting back, kind of settled into life here in the States after having spent a significant time in Pyeongchang. Yes, that is the site of the 2018 Winter Olympics. That's where her and her teammates on the women's hockey team had several dramatic victories. But most importantly, they won the gold medal game over Canada. It was the first gold medal for the women's hockey team in 20 years, but that was not her first international competition. She won back to back to back golds as the leader of the under 18 women's world cup championships. Please welcome Kayla Barnes. Kayla, how you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing all right. So the way you're in New Hampshire, the weather in New Hampshire, not, not cooperating in the last couple of days, but is that good? Do you like the cold weather? Yeah, I don't mind it. Uh, I've been out here for a couple of years. Uh, we go to college out here, so I've, I've kind of gotten used to it, adapted to it. But it's definitely no um, 75 and sunny like, like L.A. So. <laughs> because you're from L.A., yeah. right? Yeah, born and raised up until I went to high school. So Very nice. Very nice. Is it crazy to think that you're now back at college playing college hockey after competing at the highest level in the world in the Olympics and winning the gold medal? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So um, actually, I don't, I won't return to, to BC until the fall. Um, I withdrew yeah. for this year, but um, I'm really excited and looking forward to going back. But it's pretty crazy. It's definitely a different atmosphere, a different type of game, and it'll be interesting to see all the college players that were on us, our, our team, and in Canada go back to their respective teams, and it'll bring a lot of life to the league, I think. So were other members of the Boston College team, your teammates, also on the U.S. team? Yeah, so there were um, there's five BC Eagles on um, the U.S. team, and three of us are currently at Boston College. We have two seniors, and then I'm going to, going to be a freshman, um, and then we had two already graduated. Awesome, awesome. And guys, if you want to follow Kayla away from the show, you can follow her on Twitter and on Instagram at Kayla underscore Barnes 27. I'm at the only MC on Twitter and Instagram. Again, we're live here every Monday on Popcorn Talk. And also you can find us on Apple iTunes, get your podcast. If you're in the car, you just have some time to be able to just get some motivation, some inspiration in your life. Kayla, has it sunk in yet? The gold medal, everything that played out, obviously it was in the shootout where you guys beat Canada. Has it set in? I don't think, honestly, it's ever going to set in. Um, <laughs> it's been pretty crazy for all of us. Uh, we went on a crazy media tour after and got to meet a lot of really cool people and talk to a lot of um, you know, young kids and, and people all across the United States. And that was really awesome and kind of um, eye-opening for us to really see the impact of uh, what we did over there um, and how it impacted people in the United States and what um, joy it brought people. So I think um, you know, every day I get something new, a new email or a new um, Instagram message or something, just someone saying, like, thank you so much for winning. Like, we are such big fans. We're supporters of you guys. And um, I think it's it's been really eye-opening. I don't think it will ever really get old, um, at least not for a long time for a lot of us, especially this being the first time in 20 years that we've brought home gold. And that's um, – I think it's really cool that it's, it's definitely um, going to be – keep continuing to be an eye-opening experience for us as well. Yeah, and like you said, I mean, literally you're representing the entire country. So, I mean, the entire country is watching you guys, and especially in that gold medal game against Canada, where it's just, it comes down to a shootout, and literally everyone is just pulling for you guys. I mean, that, that it, that's crazy. I mean, to think, and especially how you're 19, you're the youngest member of the team. Uh, it's crazy. We, we felt that support all the way over there in, um, in Pyeongchang. We were so far away from home, but we definitely could feel all the support on Twitter and Instagram, text messages, whatnot. Um, 
it's, it was really cool. It was a really cool moment, not only for us as a team and all we've worked for, but, um, you know, as a nation and then coming, coming home and, and feeling that victory with everyone. What was the coolest Definitely thing? Definitely really cool. What was the coolest thing you guys have done since you got back? I know you've been on Ellen and Fallon. Is there is anything top that? No, I mean those are really cool. I think um, we went, we got to go to a number of uh, NHL games, which was with they were all unique in their own way. But I think one of the coolest things for all of us was going to the She Believes Cup with the U.S. soccer team. Um, you know, they invited us to their game, and we got to to meet them and and talk with them for a little bit. And we're such big supporters of each other. Um, you know, we both fight for equal pay, and we, we both believe in the same thing, and we're essentially the same. We fight for the same things for the same uh, people in different sports, and so it was really cool to, to really meet them and, um, you know, hear their thoughts and, and just talk with them about a various number of things, and that was probably one of the coolest things for, for everyone um, on our team. That's fantastic. It's amazing that you're using your platform, obviously, for a good cause and obviously to really fight for something that is so important uh, in this country and even around the world. What was the mood facing Team USA in that gold medal game against Canada, knowing that, again, it had been 20 years since the U.S. had won gold. Four years ago, the team faced Canada and Sochi, lost in a shootout. What was the mood around the team? I think going into this one, it was um, our, our theme was together. We're going to do everything together, and we're going to do whatever it takes together to um, – to get the job done and I think the mood going into that game was um, pretty light um, surprisingly uh, we all knew that we we had it we knew that um, we had trained properly we had done all the little things everything we needed to do and um, the second we stepped on the ice we I think we all knew that um, it was our game and that's um, how we approached it and I think we were all over them in that game and um, we really came together you know the energy on the bench was great the energy in the building from our family and friends and other people that were there is amazing to just feed off of. So I think it was a good thing that, um, you know, we were pretty light and not tense, and you could definitely feel that um, buzzing through our team. Was there ever doubt in your mind in that game? I mean, when you're, you're playing the, you know, the periods and then it goes to the shootout, was there ever doubt? I mean, not for not for us. I don't think you could feel it in the locker room going into overtime. We we went off and they resurfaced, and you know people were singing and dancing in the locker room, and the mood was light. And there's definitely been times with our team where you come into the locker room and it's silent, and people you know are beating themselves up and this and that. But that wasn't the mood in this. And it was a completely different atmosphere, and that was um, something I think we all noticed um, going into that period. And again, I said that energy we fed off of when we were light and loose, and we knew that we had it. And um, you know, during the shootout, obviously. Obviously, there was some, you know, over time and shootout, there's some stressful moments. You know, you hold your breath. You, you're like, oh, no, no, like, you know, let's get it out or this or that. But, um, you know, we have faith in all our shooters and our, especially our goaltending. And there was never a doubt in our minds that they wouldn't get the job done. Yeah. Was this a team that really challenged each other? I mean, you're there picking each other up. You're there when you see maybe a player feel like they might be having a time of weakness. You build them up. Yeah. So we have a big thing on our team. Uh, we... We call it picking up pennies. Um, you know, we have this thing where, you know, a lot of people would overlook picking up a penny as opposed to a $20 bill. But um, it's just, you know, a metaphor for us is, you know, pick up the pennies. Pick up, you know, someone one day might not be feeling feeling great. They, you know, might have a bad day of this. Or pick up a couple extra pennies for them and, you know, balance it out. And then, you know, when you're not having a good day, they'll pick up pennies for you. And so I think we really, um, you know, picked up pennies for each other and we, um when we needed to lift each other up, we did. And people put their weight in, in various different ways. And I think that's what's so great about our team is everyone on our team was the margin of victory. And without a single member of our team, we wouldn't have pulled it out. And that's, um, I think, really amazing that without one puzzle piece that um, we wouldn't have gotten the job done. And um, I think that's really important in a team atmosphere, especially um, contributed to our success. Oh, 100%. Yeah, team is only as good as its weakest link, obviously, is what they say. How much have you grown, do you think, over the past several months and in training for this and competing at the Olympics? And again, just at age 19, I mean, to be able to kind of get put into this as the youngest member of the team, how much have you grown? Have you looked at that and thought, man, I've grown in this area or I've done these things? Yeah, I think tremendously, um, both on and off the ice, these women are such strong, powerful women. And on the ice, they're obviously incredibly talented, and they push me every day. Um, you know, they're big, strong, 
so good at what they do and they push me to be better every day. Um, you know, that level of play was something I wasn't exactly used to playing. So on the ice, it was every day was something new, something new I need to work on, um, a new play, this, that, and definitely grew from that. And that's really exciting. But I think I grew a lot off the ice too with the team. Um, like I said, these are women. They, People are married. They have families. They're getting in, engaged in this and that. And, <clears throat> different parts of their life and like you said I'm 19 years old and I had so much to learn from them um, they have so much life experience especially those that have been to two three Olympics um, they had so much to share with me and that was really um, helpful for me and helped me grow a lot and mature a lot through this whole process um, you know they taught me a lot how to handle things and um, how to respond how to you know pick someone up and it was really cool they really um, brought me under their wings and and treated me as um, you know they, they treated me as a little sister almost but um, as equals to them as well at the same time so it was a really unique experience but I definitely learned a lot from them yeah and I'm sure it's important I'm sure you went in there kind of like a sponge trying to soak up everything that you had I mean the, the people who have been in the two or three Olympics before and obviously so much experience playing to have that knowledge of there's so much I can learn yeah yeah it was great it was you know, I asked questions, and you know, I sometimes I'd be like, oh, "Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm asking so many questions." They're like, "No, it's never a bad question for us. Like, soak it all up because, you, you know, they said one day this could be you. Like, you could be you could be talking to someone your age um, when you're older, and so learn everything you can. You know, I wish I had this information when I was your age, and so I definitely I definitely soaked it all up. It was really awesome too have so many outlets of, of different experiences and thoughts and opinions and um, to get various views on things. So that was um, a unique aspect and perspective to, to learning different things. Awesome, awesome. Well, I want to crank it kind of way back uh, to maybe when you started playing. How old were you when you started playing? I know we have a picture here that I think I saw on your Twitter. It was you and I think you said one of your friends. And you look, I mean, very young. How young were you when you started playing? I was three years old. Three. Yeah. What can you do? At, what can you do at age three, playing or getting just on the ice? Yeah, I, I think I was just skating. Um, I played on a on a team, um, but I my parents used to tell me I didn't touch the puck for like the three first three years I played. Like I just skated around the ice <laughs> and followed the puck, but I didn't touch it. I didn't score my first goal until. I was uh, like six or seven, so but they said I loved it. Like no matter what, I loved just going out on the ice, and um, so I guess I don't know. Not much. I didn't do much at three, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of was out there falling and getting back up and skating and whatnot. But it was it was awesome. It's where you know I learned to play and I loved it. Did you kind of know that that was your sport? I mean, any kid, I think mean, I feel like you know maybe okay i'm going to focus on this did you was that your sport you just knew it yeah i think i definitely just found a, a deeper love for this sport than any the, any other sport i played um soccer as well um as long as i played hockey um i love soccer but you know I, as i started to excel in hockey i just knew that this was my um so oh, my calling my um my path and um that's where, you know, when I was in high school, I started to, um, you know, focus more on hockey and um, start to look at colleges for hockey and, and really start to train for that sport specifically. Um, I still played other sports, but, yeah, definitely I knew um, at, a, at a relatively young age um, that this was the sport that I was going to play and this is the sport I love the most. What goals did you have growing up and playing hockey at a young age? I, I mean, a lot of goals. I uh, I played boys hockey growing up, and you know, actually, when I was, my mom will tell you the story. She, um, when I was five years old, I or five, six, seven, I remember watching the um, uh, the Olympics in 2006, and then 2010. Um, I was pretty young still, and um, you know, I remember telling my mom that like, I'm going to be an Olympian one day. I'm going to go there and be an Olympian. And I was like, oh, okay, okay, like yeah, <laughs> you're going to do that, okay. And, you know, I was like, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be an Olympian. I'm, that's, my, that's what I want to do. And then obviously I had college hockey dreams. I had, you know, I wanted to win a national championship, um, you know, with a club team. Never did that, but it's okay. I medaled there and, and went on. I, I uh, 
I won some other things along the way that I didn't really necessarily dream of, but they're unexpected victories that I learned a lot from, and um, definitely glad, good, glad I had those experiences like U18 World Championships and the Quebec Dewey Tournament, um, all experiences that definitely weren't like dreams for me, but um, definitely successes I had that were, that were awesome learning platforms. Now, be honest, did you tell your mom I told you so? <laughs> No, no, I didn't. I just, you know, I just feel sometimes I'm like, yeah, I remember when I told you that when I was five? And she goes, yeah, I never thought you were going to do it. And, yeah, so, and, and now we're there and we joke about it. It's awesome. But, I mean, it's, it's um, a good example of follow your dreams. Dream big. Like, whatever you want to do, go do it, whatever it might be. Um, it doesn't even have to be a sport. It can be whatever you're passionate about. But, um, just be confident in yourself. I mean, obviously my parents are my biggest supporters and they supported me in everything that I did. But, um, you know, in, in the end, at the end of the day, like you're the only person that um, truly, truly believes in yourself and can, and can get you to where you want to be. So um, I just think that's a funny story to, to share. <laughs> How yeah. important is it to have those goals or for you especially to be able to set your sights on something and be able to constantly be working towards that? Yeah, I think it's, it's definitely, uh, we work with a mental skills coach um, often, and I do uh, personally as well. I think it's huge mental skills side of the game, and um, she always talks about setting goals, and so you have a concrete vision of what you want to do. If you don't set goals, you you lose track of um, what you really want, what you really want of what you're getting, and, and um, so I think it's it's honestly critical to the game to to set, you know, concrete goals. I, I set goals before each game. I set goals before each, um, you know, school year, each, each, anything, anything I'm about to, to tackle, um, I set goals for. And, you know, afterwards it's really cool to reflect on if, um, if you set, if you accomplished your goals and if you didn't, how can you improve to, to, to accomplish those goals? And if you did accomplish them, that's great. Keep learning from that. And so I think it's, it definitely is important and it helps, um, you know, pass out what you want to do. Tell me more about this mental skills coach. Cause I don't think a lot of people who even follow sports even would think about that. They think obviously you have your coaches who are pushing you physically and making you do drills, but what is this mental skills coach and what does that involve on a daily or weekly basis? Yeah, so we met with our mental skills coach once or twice a week, um, and then we have individual meetings with her as well. And she works with various number of athletes, and she's amazing. She, it's more about um, you know how you view the game and how you view yourself, the confidence you you have in yourself. And I work with her a lot on confidence. Um, a lot of people struggle with finding confidence in themselves and um, you know trusting their their instincts and what they do best. And so you know we work with them on skills like that and team building. We did so much team building with her, um, you know, learning to trust and have faith in each other and um, know that your teammates going to do what they need to do so that um, we have the best chance for success. So it's more just looking at the mental side of the game, mental side of the game and um, really trusting your process. And, um, and you know, you can be the best physically, but if your mind's not there, um, you know, mind, your, your mind is 90% of the game, at least. Uh, that's the way we look at it with our mental skills coach. Yeah, it's amazing. You were talking you know, five, ten minutes ago that the weakest link on the team, you know, literally, you, you, that's, your team is only as strong as the weakest link. And I think you're only as strong, you being, I mean, anyone is only as strong as the weakest thought that you have. Yeah, yeah I agree. I, I mean, that we talked about that too. You know, they, she's like, you're going to have negative thoughts in the, in the, in the game. You're going to have... You're gonna mess up, and you come back, and you'll be like, "I messed up." Like my teammates are mad at me, this, that, and she's like, "You know, you gotta block those out." You know, your teammates are there. That's the reason why you have teammates to to pick you up and to to really um, fix those fix those mistakes that you made. And you're gonna be there one time when they make a mistake, and that's how a team works. And so it's it's stuff like that. It's definitely just creating positivity within yourself and within the team, and knowing that someone has your back and um, I think it's really positive to have a mental skills coach because it really changes your outlook on the game and has helped us a lot over the past um, you know couple of months. Do you remember a time in a particular game whether it's this Olympics or another previous competition or just a time in life where you 
were struggling mentally or you, you're thinking of these obstacles that you're overcoming and you're getting down? I mean, do you remember a specific time that you kind of had to overcome? Yeah, definitely this year. Um, I struggled some. Um, you know, I'm new to this team, and um, it was it was definitely hard for me. There's been girls that are three time Olympians on this team, and they have so much experience, and they're so talented. And, um, you know, I definitely talked with my mental skills coach about how I don't feel like I fit on this team. Like, I don't – I feel like I'm not good enough, and, uh, you know, they don't think I'm good enough, and this and that. And when that wasn't the case at all, it, it, I was plenty – plenty fun and fit and fun on the team. I was just too in my head and too worried about uh, what they thought of me or um, or how good they thought I was. And, you know, it was affecting my performance because I wasn't, um, you know, believing in myself and I wasn't finding the confidence within myself that I usually have. Um, and she really worked, um, worked with me on that this year leading up to the Olympics. Um, you know, I think it was December, January. It was right before the Olympics this was happening. And I, I, was, I pretty much ran to her panicked, not panicked, but I was just like, I'm not good enough, this, that. Like, like I'm not playing, like, as well as I should and, and this and that. And she really helped me work through that to where at the Olympics I was, you know, good to go. I was um, very confident in myself. And I knew my, my teammates had confidence in me and um, knew that my mental game had to be strong for those for those games because it's the biggest stage, um, you know, in the world for us. So, um, yeah, definitely I, I've struggled with um, a lot of mental um, challenges over not just this past year, but, um, you know, the past couple of years as well. Oh, for sure, for sure. And I, I, I heard you were actually initially – I don't know what I say, cut. Was it cut from the team? I mean, you were on kind of yeah. the, the national team and you were cut. Uh, what was going through your mind at that point? Or tell me about that experience. Yeah, so we had tryouts in April, and, um, yeah, we went through tryouts. I, I played great. I, I knew I had a great tryout, and I put my best self out there for, um, you know, making this that team, and um, I fell short. They didn't take me. They cut me from the team and sent me home, and they told me to just keep training and be prepared um, for a call-up, maybe. If, but I never thought that was going to happen in a million I, years. Um, I was going to say, were you actually so, thinking? Yeah. Were you actually thinking that that would happen, or was that? A, oh yeah, okay, that's what you tell everyone who you kind of let go of. Yeah. Be ready. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I definitely thought that's okay. That's what they tell everyone: be ready in case someone gets hurt or this or that. They're going to call up. Um, someone new, but the never in a million years did I think that they were actually going to call me up that I would be going to these 2018 Olympics. I, um, it was a complete shock to me. Um, and you know, I mean, I wasn't I wasn't completely devastated when I got cut. It, for me, I I had a good outlook on it. Um, I I was like, I'm really young. I either make this team and I get to go to the Olympics and that will be amazing, or I get to go to school and train for the next Olympics and I'll still be young at the next Olympics if I, you know, if I make that team only be like 22 or whatever. So um, it was really a win-win situation for me. Um, I was, it was hard to be cut. Obviously you never want, you know, never want that news, but like, like you said, I never expected to be called back. And so when I got that news, it was really um, exciting uh, time for me. Yeah. And I'm sure it's crazy because you're talking about, oh, in, in another four years, it's amazing when you're in, a time period how long that seems of oh if you don't make this waiting four years i mean you when you feel like you're this close i mean it's yeah. that would have been very difficult yeah it, it would have been it would have been hard definitely for us for me to um you know wait that long but you know it's it's a process and we have to trust for us i did and um if I had to wait four years, that's how long I would have waited, and I would have been okay with it, and I would have gone through college, and I would have enjoyed my my college time, and and then gone on for um, you know hopefully for the next Olympics. But um, I'm definitely glad it came sooner rather than later. <laughs> yeah, aren't we all considering uh, you helped win the team the gold? Uh, you know, what was your what was your like thought process for training and for working hard when they tell you, hey, be prepared, keep working hard. Were you like, okay, I'm doubling down on this training, I'm doubling down on practice, on everything that I can do to try to get better? I mean, no, not really. I just, I stuck to my game plan. I knew, um, you know, I've been progressively getting better and stronger, um, you know, over the past 
you know, a couple of years that I've been in the national team program, and they've really helped mold my training schedule and um, all the things necessary that come into preparation for that level. So I kind of just stuck to my game plan. I knew that it was working for me, so I wasn't going to change things up too much or, or try and beat myself up over, um, you know, why I didn't make the team and add extra lifts and skill sessions and whatnot. I was gonna, just going to stick to what worked for me best. And, um, you know, it, it ended up working out which is amazing. Absolutely, absolutely. One thing I, I love to talk with athletes about, um, even in looking at my past uh, as an athlete and other you know, friends, is talking about like the worst practice. Because you, you often look at when you're in a bad practice, you say, oh, well, it's not as bad as this one that I went through. Do you have uh, like a, a practice that you're like, man, this practice was extremely difficult or one that was maybe tough to get through that you always look back on that pushes you through the rest of them? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, this year during residency with, down in, in Tampa, we had one practice where we got completely just skated for an hour and a half, skated to the point where people were legit falling over by the end, like they could not barely walk to the locker room. Um, so yeah, definitely everyone has practices. Um, we also, you know, I've also had practices where have been like, I just, I can't, I can't catch the puck, I can't shoot the puck, I can't make a tape-to-tape -tape pass, I can't do this, I can't do that, and it's like, you're really, you're just off, and, you know, there's definitely been practices like that, and, you know, I've, I've never been really an amazing practice player, but I, I always tell myself, you know, you're going to have bad practices, that's where you get better, I'd rather be bad in practice than be bad in the game, so that's my, kind of my motto, <laughs> um, where, you know, practice is where you make mistakes and you get better, so you don't make them in the games. And um, but yeah, definitely have had some really tough practices that are tough to get through. But once they're done, they're over. Get them, get them out of your mind, and move on to the next one. And, and then you can use them as you know maybe encouragement when you're in another bad practice. Where you're like, well, it wasn't as bad as this time when I was down in Tampa. Yeah, exactly. You know, I. I've done that a couple times. You know, some some of my teammates are like, "Oh, I'm having a bad day today." I'm like, "You know what? I've been having a bad week. I just, you know, all these practices just stringing together some crappy practices. But you know, it's okay. We all bring each other up, and it's it's fun, and it's it's good to recognize when you're when you're sucking. You know, it's like if you can't recognize when you're not your when you're not performing, you're not your best. Then um, you know you need to look in the mirror a little bit harder. I think so. Oh, absolutely, um, yeah. absolutely. You know, we've talked about you being the youngest member of the team. You're also the smallest member of the team, five foot two inches tall, and your youngest member of the team. Was that on your mind going into this games, and just the thought of you being the youngest member and the smallest member? Or how did, does that influence how you play out there? Um, not really. Honestly, I get that question a lot. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you're the youngest and the shortest. That's a you know, dynamic duo right there. But, um, you know, I don't, I've never really thought of my size as being an issue. Um, I've never let it um, become an issue. I've never let it hinder my game. I've always, you know, whether you're six foot or you're five two like me, I, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna play big. And that's that's kind of always been my model. Like, yeah, I'm small, but I'm going to play big. And that's... Um, that's how I get through it. I've never, I've never looked at it. Other people will look at it as a, as a disadvantage, but I've never looked at it that way. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been um, definitely not really a challenge for me. But other people would like to think it might be, um, which is, which is interesting. But I don't let it ever get to me. It's, um, you know, height is just, it's just a number to me. Age is just a number, and I don't want people to define me by um, my things that I can't control, things that, you know, I can't control when I was born, I can't control how tall I am, um, you know, I can only control how I play and, and how I view myself, so that's um, control what you can control for Abs me. Absolutely, I, I love that attitude, and I, th I think a gold medal adds like seven inches. I could be wrong, yeah. but I think a gold medal adds, I can, I can look on Wikipedia, but that might be what I read. Is it... Is it difficult maybe looking forward, or is that kind of encouraging looking forward, knowing you already have a gold medal at age 19 and looking to the future and saying, what else can I accomplish and not focused on what you have accomplished? Yeah, I think um, definitely looking at both aspects. And, you know, I definitely am not, you know, I definitely have new goals. So... We talked about goals earlier in this in this segment. I think for me, I've accomplished my greatest goal in in um, 
you know, in my mind, you know, the Olympics for me, winning Olympic gold was one of my greatest goals in, in hockey. And I've, I've accomplished that. And that's amazing. But that doesn't mean I'm going to stop working for a new goal that I set. So I have like, um, so I have, um, you know, NCAA goals and um, new Olympic goals. You know, I have a goal for 2022. That's my new goal. Um, and, you know, it's, it's for me, it's not really, um, don't keep looking on the fast. For a little bit, obviously, yes, we're going to celebrate this and it's going to be great. But, um, you know, I can't ride on it forever. And so that's kind of the way I'm looking at it now. I, I'm excited to go back to my NCAA team and, and I want to win a national championship with them. And I want to have, I have personal record or personal goals that I want to want to set and um, looking forward, like you said, new goal to 2022. So that's the kind of the way I'm looking at it. Um, definitely. Um, it is a great accomplishment, this this Olympic, but um, definitely not going to be my only accomplishment. What drives you? Myself, I think, um, is my biggest. You know, I, I always tell myself no one else is going to do the work for you. No one else is going to push you. Um, it's basically all on you. Um, no one really cares if you fall through the cracks because someone else is is working hard and coming and coming up for your spot. So um, you know, I I pride myself in being the best and being the best that I can be all the time, and that's um, something that is really important to me. So um, I think finding your your inner drive is what makes people great um, in in whatever that is, and you know, being the best that you can be, not being the best that someone else is. Um, you know, try to focus on yourself, and I think that's what really drives me. I have an inner fire, which is really important, I think. No, absolutely. I'm sure that's something that the, the mental coach even maybe helps with. Yeah, exactly. She's she's amazing with it. You know, it's you're a unique individual, and you add a, you know, especially on a team. Some people play individual sports, but on a team, each individual adds a, a different, unique um, piece to piece to the puzzle, which I think is a really good analogy. Without one piece of the puzzle, um, you know, the puzzle's not complete. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, just being your unique self, you bring something to the table that no one else can bring. And that's important to recognize what your role is and what you can bring to the table. Be the best at that. Be the best at, if, you know, for hockey, if you're great at goal scoring, score goals. If you're great at playing defense, play defense and be great at that because that's what that team needs you to be and that's I think whatever that is in life be great at what um, you know what your thing is find that and be great at it what would you consider I mean having um, achieved this gold medal having had three golds and the other 18 team you're just getting started obviously with your career in college what do you define success as Success for me, um, you know, I don't, I don't really define myself by by medals and trophies, and um, I kind of define myself by how I perform and how, um, just me as a person as well. I I pride myself in how I treat my teammates and how I treat my my coaches and my staff and how um, how people view me as um, not just a hockey player but a person. So success for me is. Um, you know, not, not necessarily in the win or loss category. Um, obviously, I'm very competitive and I love winning. Um, but success is, um, you know, the memories that you get to make with teammates and the, and the way people view you and the impact you get to make. You know, for me, it's really a huge success bringing this gold medal back, but it's even bigger success that I get to share it with so many people and inspire the next generation of, of young girls and um even boys to play hockey, anyone to just follow their dreams. Like that's the biggest success for me is that we get to share this with everyone across the United States and inspire a new generation to, to follow their dreams and do what they want to do. Um, that's how I define success, especially from this Olympic um, gold. I love that. Again, you, we were talking about earlier, using the platform that you have to be able to help others and just encourage and inspire others. And you never know. I mean, the next teammate that you have in, in four years or, or in eight years at the Olympics or on another team might be listening to this and might be kind of in that stage in their early teen years. What advice do you have to them looking at them maybe as a future teammate? What would you tell them? Just to keep working hard and like I said, to follow your dreams, whatever you love, whatever, you know, that thing is, whatever your neck is, 
go for it and dream big and and love it and and like immerse yourself in it totally. Um, you know, I remember at the last Olympics in in 2014, I was 14 years old and I was um, you know watching it with my friends at at school and um, you know it's just it's crazy to go from there to now and to see how much I've grown and you know people always say. Um, you know, to follow your dreams, that's super cliche and, and, and whatnot, but it, it's true. If you want something, you have to go get it. You have to make it happen. And I just think, you know, work hard, work hard, have fun. You know, a lot of, you know, people are watching this now, they're younger, like, um, enjoy being young, enjoy your friends, enjoy high school, enjoy middle school, whatever that is, enjoy that. But also, you know, start um, preparing and, um, growing through those years um, learn what you can if you if you can talk to an older person in college or if you get a chance to meet an olympian or this or that ask questions don't be shy just soak it all in and um you know just take advantage of whatever resources you have yeah and i think you said the goals are good but you got to put in that work uh, how many hours a week do you practice how many hours a week do you think you uh put in on the ice rink or off the ice rink working towards your skill oh boy um lots of hours um <laughs> you know definitely at least four hours a day wow to just and you know not necessarily on ice but um you know to on ice off ice lifting mm -hmm. mental skills whatever it is that day um and that's on top of school as well so i take a lot of pride in school oh, and yeah. so it's definitely a lot of work but anything that's worth it is a lot of work so that's how i um you know, I look at it, and you know, I'm never going to forget standing with my teammates and gold medal around my neck. Uh, you know, I'm gonna when I'm tired or I'm feeling lazy, I'm going to remember that moment and be like, all right, I, I'm going to be okay because it's going to be worth it. Absolutely, absolutely. That's a great final message for us, Kayla. Thank you so much for joining us. Do you have a couple minutes? I like to do a fun game with my guests, just kind of like a rapid fire, uh, kind of fun quiz. You got a couple minutes? Yeah, of course. Perfect, perfect. We're going to maybe bring up some just some fun music in the background and kind of talk about your time in uh, 2018 in Pyeongchang. First question, did you learn any Korean when you were in Korea? And if so, yes. what did you learn? What, what kind of words do we got? Um, 감사합니다 is thank you. Um, 안녕하세요 is hi. And that's about the extent that I learned. <laughs> <laughs> what was the favorite thing about Olympic Village? Um, seeing all the flags on the buildings, um, each each country had uh, their own flag on their windows, so it was really cool to see the different countries all around the, the village. Nice. What was the best Korean food that you had while over there? Um, Korean barbecue. So good. Mm. Highly recommend. Very nice. Very nice. Is there a certain flavor that you like? Certain sauce? Um, no, I don't really know. I just kind of tried everything and uh, Awesome, awesome. Uh, what athlete in any sport do you look up to the most? Um, ooh, that's tough. I definitely look up to the three-time Olympians on my team. They're amazing. Um, I got to meet Sean White when I was uh, over there, and he's obviously incredible, and his story is incredible. So he's someone I really look up to. He's, he's incredibly talented and good at what he does. So that was really cool. Awesome. What other Olympic sport would you compete in if you could? Definitely figure skating um, or, or uh, half-pipe snowboarding where they do all the tricks, and that was really cool to watch. Awesome, awesome. And finally, how many more uh, gold medals do you think you're going to win? Hopefully a lot more. I'm, you know, my goal probably is at least two more. At there least. You so, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Well, I believe in it. Obviously, you got a great foundation and you got a great attitude to be able to get all that practice. And Kayla, thank you so much for taking the time just to encourage and inspire other people. And again, using your platform just for an amazing cause. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. If you guys, again, want to follow Kayla away from the show, you can follow her at Kayla underscore Barnes 27. You can follow me at The Only MC on Twitter and on Instagram. Guys, again, we are here every Monday offering this motivation and inspiration. We just want you to live a better life. And when you hit those obstacles, to be able to just push through them because on the other side is that gold medal. Guys, tell a friend. Go comment, rate, subscribe on iTunes. Again, just share that inspiration. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.
From producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals. 